We want to bring you some late-breaking news on the city's south side. A man shot outside of a southeast side pediatrician's office this morning after showing up while his ex-girlfriend and child were inside for a doctor's visit. San Antonio police saying that according to a sergeant on the scene, the man who fired the shots was a family member who said he was there to protect the woman and the child because she was afraid. SAPD said there has been a history of contention between the woman and the father of the child, so she asked her brother to go to the appointment with her. The woman's brother was waiting in the car when the woman's ex-boyfriend showed up. During a short altercation, the brother shot the women's ex-boyfriend. The man in his 30s had injuries that were described as life-threatening. The shooter told police he was defending himself. The shooter is, the shooting is still under investigation. We want to bring you the latest now, the fallout from that devastating earthquake that killed more than 33,000 people in Turkey and Syria. There is growing outrage as Turkish officials turn their sights on the builders. However, as Marcus Moore explains, critics say the government played a role in those poor construction standards. Chances of finding survivors are fading. Here, a 10-year-old girl is pulled from the devastation 147 hours after the earthquake. Every successful recovery considered a miracle. After nearly seven days underneath this building, rescuers in Hatay reached 17-year-old Asya. Asya. I'm not hurt. I fell directly into a hole, she responds. Through the mangled rebar, they pull her out to safety. And we first met the family of 17-year-old Adnan Muhammad Kirkut as they held vigil outside his destroyed apartment in Gaziantep. The teen telling us he ate flowers in the family living room to survive. Rescuers freeing him from that tomb 94 hours after the quake. Following his release from the hospital, we were with Adnan as he returned to that scene. Where it seemed the gravity of what he survived is only just beginning to set in. He told us, I don't know what to say. I have no words. Turkish President Erdogan's government now facing increasing frustration for what's being called a slow and inadequate response. The humanitarian crisis worsening. Millions of survivors now homeless and with scarce food supplies, forced to find refuge in tents and makeshift shelters amid the rubble in sub-freezing temperatures. And the road to recovery will be very difficult. This is what the powerful earthquake did to some of the roads here in this region. The earth has opened up and there are massive slabs of asphalt left cracked and broken. It's one of the reasons why it was difficult to get aid to some of the rural areas. The search efforts now continue across this region. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Pazarjik, Turkey. Meantime, back here at home, we are continuing to follow local efforts to help people in Turkey and Syria affected by that deadly earthquake. The Raindrop Foundation sent donations through the Turkish embassy in Houston on Sunday. They're continuing to collect things like baby formula, heating elements, and monetary donations to help survivors of the quake to rebuild their lives in this year's after this tragedy. Ferat Oz Turk says he knows about a long recovery after the 1999 earthquake in Turkey, and he hopes what they send will show the people of Syria and Turkey that they are not alone. Our help, hopefully, they will be able to, with our humanity's help, we will be able to, you know, um, help them to invigorate what they have, you know, what they had before. So far, the Raindrop Foundation has raised more than $800,000. Their goal, $1 million. We've got a link on KSAT.com where you can donate to the organization Embrace Relief. The way people work, how they work, and where they work. It's been changing over the last few years. We did see a huge shift from work from home during the pandemic. As Max Massey shows us now, those co-working ideas and spaces could be the future of our workforce. We raise money for oil and gas exploration, mostly here in Texas. Jason is the CEO and co-founder of Veritex, one of the many companies now housed in this Venture X on the northwest side. You have a sense of community. You have a sense of being able to have other people help you build your brand. Uh, and it gives you a very cost-effective way to come to work. Jim Garrett owns Venture X Northwest, and he's seen a real shift in working in real time. CBRE has invested $300 million in co-working spaces. Uh, you've had an explosion of growth with us. So we've gone from one space about six years ago to in total about 140 spaces right now. We've already seen immense growth in the co-working spaces around the country and around San Antonio, and this could just be the start.
We've got about another 200 in some stage of development. And what you're going to find is that even though it's about 5% of the workforce now, in 10 years, it's going to be about 30% of the workforce. Jim tells me they're looking at building another four locations. They're also looking down in Houston, San Marcos, College Station, and Waco. And he isn't the only one who sees setups like these the working way of the future. I do think it's the future of the workforce because while working at home is, is viable for some industries, it's not viable for every industry. And there's a huge difference in accountability and, and um, there's a huge difference in the ability to perform when you go to a place. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Americans who are currently in Russia are being told to depart the country as soon as possible. A travel advisory from the U.S. State Department says U.S. citizens should, quote, exercise increased caution due to the risk of wrongful detentions. The advisory also says Russian security services have previously arrested Americans, denied them fair treatment, and then convicted them despite no credible evidence. According to the State Department, Russian security services are also targeting foreign and international organizations that they deem, quote, undesirable. We're taking a look outside with live cam. Get on the roller coaster. Strap yep. yourself in because it's going to be a wild ride this week. We're going up the roller coaster right now. Temperatures are going to be near 80 degrees by Wednesday, and then a stronger cold front arrives and send us right back into winter. First, though, let's get through the day today. Here's a look outside with current conditions, some clouds and temperatures. Seeing a break in the clouds right now over San Antonio for the most part, so those temperatures are going to climb. Right now we're in the low 60s, but we're expecting a high temperature near 70. Winds are also starting to pick up slightly. We're seeing an occasional wind gust of up to 20, 25 miles per hour, especially closer to the coast. Now the winds are going to be a big factor in the coming days. Tomorrow we'll see wind gusts of up to 30, 35 miles per hour. It'll still be breezy on Wednesday, but then again on Thursday, wind gusts of up to 30, 35 miles per hour entirely possible. And with that, here's a look at that temperature roller coaster. Tuesday, tomorrow, Valentine's Day, 75, 80 on Wednesday. Strong cold front arrives, 50s Thursday, Friday and Saturday. I'll be back to talk about our rain chances increasing in the overnight hours, although you'll probably be disappointed when it comes to rainfall totals. We are still in a drought. David Ursula. Wow, that's hard to believe. All right, an attempt to bake a cake into a recipe. It turns into a recipe of disaster, actually. Why these two had to call 911 for help? Channing Tatum went up against two James Cameron epics at the weekend box office. We'll let you know who came out on top, and we've got some estimates for this weekend's top five films. Magic Mike's Last Dance, starring Shannon Taylor and Salma Hayek, debuting at the top of the box office. This launches the franchise's final installment with $8.2 million. James Cameron's new movie edged out his Oscar winner as Avatar, The Way of Water, made $6.9 million for second place. The 25th anniversary re-release of Titanic debuted in third place, sailing away with $6.4 million. That's incredible. It's a rerun. 80 for Brady dropped two spots in the standings, now in fourth place, picking up $6 million. And Knock at the Cabin fell from first to fifth, earning $4.4 million. Outside with live cam, a little cloudy, a little warm. You know, last week I missed the drought monitor, but I was hoping we'd see a little less deep red right over San Antonio and Bear County and Comal County, but it didn't happen. We've still got exceptional drought. Ooh, so yeah. that means aquifer is not doing good. No, the aquifer is not. The aquifer is down three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. As you can see, it's some 30 feet below the average for the month. Hey, I want to show you the pollen count too. Molds are low at 320 and ash is low at 40 as well. You know what I don't see on there? any mount cedar. That is some good news. All right, here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast. Getting windy tonight. We'll see wind gusts of up to 30 plus miles per hour. Similar story tomorrow. We'll also have some drizzle tonight. Rainfall accumulation, though, not going to help out the drought situation. Less than a tenth of an inch. And we have big temperature swings in the forecast. Nearly 30 degree temperature drop and even a light freeze to consider by Friday morning. Jam packed forecast coming up right after this.
This Rodeo Remembers, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Without ranching, there might not be a stock show and rodeo. And the birthplace of America's ranching industry can be traced back to one Texan, Captain King. Richard King was born in New York City in 1824, but he wasn't there long. At age 11, he ran away, finding a new home, working the steamboats of the South. In 1847, during the Mexican War, King's steamer skills were put into service. He ran supplies and men along the Rio Grande. And when the war ended, King and his partners turned those routes into a steamer company. On a business trip to Corpus Christi in 1852, King rode through an area known as the Wild Horse Desert. What he saw was opportunity. If horses could flourish, so could a cattle ranch. In the following years, King and his partner purchased large areas of this unused land, but who would work it? After a cattle buying trip to Correas, Mexico, King invited the town back to Texas. The hundred or so that followed became Los Queneños, or King's Men. And with their hard work and King's ambition, the ranch grew. When the Civil War ended, the northern demand for beef was high, and so were the prices. So King seized opportunity once again in 1869 with one of the first big cattle drives. In time, King Ranch became one of the world's largest, and as many copied its success, it became known as the birthplace of the American ranching industry. Not good weather for ranching right now with no rain. I know. Uh, I can't believe we're still in drought. And but that is some, a piece of good news that you just gave us about Mountain Cedar because normally doesn't it peak at Valentine's? No, it actually comes to an end. That's around so Valentine's we're right on time. Yeah, we're right on time, which is good news. But Ursula. I'm allergic to oak, and that season is right around the corner. So <laughs> sorry. Just when one is over, another one comes I know. back. Yeah, that's Yay, the way South it is. Texas. That's the way it is here. But hey, take a look outside right now. You can see that we're seeing some sun at the airport right now. Again, these are heightened cirrus clouds that are out there, giving a milky hue to the sky, and they come in patches of thickness. So you can see on the satellite right now that over the hill country, Kerrville, it's overcast right now, and it's quite a bit cooler, still in the upper 50s in Kerrville. 57 in Bandera, where there's a little bit of cloud cover as well. But look at Divine. Divine has seen a little bit of sun, and it's already near 67 degrees there. A wider view, it's 70 in Catula. So today we're going to see temperatures warm up to near 70 degrees around San Antonio. A beautiful day out there today. And yeah, there's even some light returns on the radar up there in the hill country. But this is all, if it's any it's making it to the ground, it's just sprinkles, little spits there up in the atmosphere because a lot of this evaporating before it hits the surface. And so as you're planning the rest of your day, maybe going out to pick up the kiddos, really nice. You can let the, the windows down of the car because temperatures will only be near 70 degrees around 3, 4 p.m. Then as we head into the evening, it'll be mild. Temperatures will only be in the 60s after sunset. By midnight, though, that's when we can start to see some drizzle and also those winds will pick up too. We are not anticipating much rain at all with the drizzle overnight. In fact, mainly uh, maybe up to a tenth of an inch of rainfall in some places. Most folks will only get a couple hundredths of an inch of that drizzle uh, later on tonight. And by the morning commute, most of that will be away. So here's the weather setup. Here's the tail of the weather. We're really seeing that Pacific moisture move in from the Pacific Ocean, but unfortunately this low is really booking it. It's moving quickly, so it's not giving our atmosphere enough time to get enough moisture into it. But instead, it is going to be tracking across parts of North Texas. So our friends across the Panhandle are getting some good rain up across uh, Northern Texas. It's going to be good rain as well. But here in San Antonio, we are missing out on the good stuff. Just some drizzle in the overnight hours for us. A front will move through pre dawn. And so even by the morning commute tomorrow, we won't have to worry about dampness really on the roads in a big way. That front is just going to make it very windy tonight and tomorrow. In fact, because humidity will be dropping too, there is a fire danger risk tomorrow on Valentine's Day. Anywhere you see this dark orange color, that's where we have very high fire danger. Del Rio, Rock Springs, Fredericksburg, Junction, that's where humidity is going to be even lower and those wind gusts are even going to be higher than about 30, 35 miles per hour. Now around San Antonio, still not a good idea to do any kind of outdoor burning either. We're still going to be under high fire risk. That orange color is a high fire risk. 
less of a fire risk east of San Antonio, but still something to consider. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day and you wake up, it'll be windy in the morning, 60 degrees. We are going to quickly see skies clear, mostly sunny in the afternoon, windy all day long, high temperature uh, near 80, uh, near 80 degrees tomorrow in the mid to upper 70s is entirely possible. We'll have winds from the west 10 to 20, gusting up to 30 plus miles per hour. Sun's going to set at 623. If you have evening plans for Valentine's Day, it'll be cool, but not uncomfortably cool. Temperatures will fall into the 50s by about 9 o'clock. All right. Then our attention turns to a pretty big warm up on Wednesday, 80 degrees for the high temperature. It's going to feel a lot like spring, but a potent cold front will move through Wednesday night into Thursday. This is going to be dry. We're not going to see any rain from this, but instead what we'll see are windy weather it was windy weather on Thursday and highs only in the 50s Thursday, Friday and even Saturday. Also want to put it on your radar that there is going to be a freeze, a light freeze on Friday morning. And so uh, you might want to consider to bring in any kind of tender vegetation Thursday, uh, protect it from that light freeze on Friday morning. We'll be more comfortable on Sunday of this upcoming weekend. So dress for two seasons this week, spring till Wednesday and then winter for the second half. David Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. A two year old, no match for this cake pan. How she ended up getting stuck and how she was able to get free. Come back. What do you do when your toddler gets her head stuck in a cake pan? Not a question we ask very often. Not really. But a Lewiston, Pennsylvania mom ended up calling 911. Apparently, we ought to ask him more often. CNN's Ginny Most explains the rescue was no cakewalk. We've seen an elk stuck in a tire, another elk trapped in a bar stool, a squirrel with its head in a cup, a skunk jammed in a jar of Skippy, a deer encased in a Doritos bag, or should we say Doritos? But this is a special recipe. Take one angel food cake pan minus the center. And then lift it out. Mix in one two-year-old Pennsylvania toddler, and forget the spatula, this recipe for disaster calls for tin cutters. Little Quinley got her head stuck in a pan. She wore it kind of like a shawl around her shoulders until the fireman got there. <laughs> she was a trooper. Easy bake, easy bake, fast as you can. There was nothing easy about this half-baked situation. Mommy stuck, mommy stuck, Quinley cried out. Mommy called 911. She was still able to eat and drink while she had this tin around her. Unlike this deer and this dog, the pooch was ravenous when they got the plastic jar off her. The Junction Fire Company used the tin snips to cut the pan in two places. Quinley's mom says that as a child, her legs got stuck in a plastic chair, so maybe it runs in the family. Quinley may not be an angel, but her rescue took the cake. Slide them in, slide them out, easy bake. Wow! Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. Wow! Oh. So that brings us to Mike and Jen, or Mike and Fiona and Jen, because they're always doing some cooking. They're always have utensils. Yeah, word and, to the wise. So careful I, I, of those bunt know. pans. Yeah, okay. that you know, a, that's why we keep Crisco and some fishing line always handy. <laughs> that was an odd segue, but I'll give that a <laughs> You never know, duct tape and zip ties too, just in case. So, hey, uh, Valentine's coming up. Want something very romantic? Well, how about heading over to Moon's Daughter Restaurant and Chef Robert Cantu is here. You got a great pasta dish, and if you want the good presentation, use some giant tweezers. Yeah, so these actually help you kind of get a nice tight twist with the pasta when you're plating it. Uh huh. Um, so you're gonna you basically use it like a fork, like a two two tine fork, and then just rotate, 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 and then you get a nice oh. tight ball. Okay, and then just kind of scooch that on yeah, the plate. Yeah, scooch it straight on the plate like that. Wonderful. Oh, okay, we need to see this recipe we're making. So. Oh my goodness. Yes, Hill Country Winery, right? And Look they, at this cookie recipe. Yeah, these cookies are a combination of dark chocolate, cherry, bourbon, and some other little goodies mixed in there. There's one missing. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> yes, I wonder who that was. All right. So do you want to send a secret message to your Valentine? Well, Andrea Cook from Mad Science of Austin and San Antonio yes. is here. Yes. yes. Well, there are many ways you can do it, but one of my favorites is just acid-base indicators. 
so far. So you oh, can. Oh, wow. I know, right? I'll, I mean, I'll teach you all the science goodies to know. We're going to see some of these things coming up. And maybe you want to do a little dancing for Valentine's. Yes, we are going to tell you about a fabulous show happening at the Tobin tomorrow night. Probably a lot of kissing going on at Valentine's, so you need the perfect <laughs> lipstick. Yes. Elsa Fernandez from <laughs> Eye Candy Boutiques will give you some tips. All that and more when SA Live continues.